be so happy, you know, like, oh, Senpai noticed me. It was so fun. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Leah Harlan here. This is the second entry in my vlog series where I talk about my process pursuing my master's in library and information sciences degrees, degree singular, here on earth. Last month, I talked about the beginning of my journey, even though we were already about a month into it. Now, here we are. It is late October, specifically October 23rd. I think that's almost exactly a month after I recorded the first one. And we are entering week 10 of my semester with these courses. Everything so far has been kind of all over the place a little bit with the pacing. I will have weeks where nothing is due and all I have to do is keep up with my readings and then suddenly all three classes have things due in the same week and I am scrambling to get everything together and somehow get enough sleep every night usually do not succeed. I mentioned it in the first video as well that even though I normally don't get to read interesting books for any of my classes, despite what some people may believe, I do have one assignment ongoing that involves reading three different books assigned by my professor, and I will have to write short reviews for each of them. And this is a, a pretty strict word limit. So I did finish the first book out of the three that I have to read. One of them is a picture book, which will be very simple and fast to read. So I'm kind of trying to save it for the end when I will probably have lots of things to do in other classes and will need the easy one to kind of bang out. I am halfway through my second book, but I wanted to talk a little bit about the first book I read because I have written the review. I submitted it to my professor and she gave me some great feedback on it before I officially submit it because she did say she will do that for each of us just one time. We can give her one review out of our three and she will give us some feedback on it before we officially submit it to be graded. So having corrected my review, I thought I would share it with all of you. The first book that I read out of the three that I was assigned, and this is the one that I actually got to choose for myself, is Zachary Ying and the Dragon Emperor by Shiran J. Zhao. Now, I love Shiran J. Zhao. I read their debut novel, which was a YA called Iron Widow. I follow them on Twitter, and I am anxiously awaiting the sequel to that one called Heavenly Tyrant, which should be coming out sometime next year. But this book is Zhao's middle grade debut. And I haven't read any middle grade books in a very long time, but I remember thinking that it sounded interesting and I wanted to check it out at some point. So when I was allowed to choose one of my books for my assignment, I asked my professor for this one and she agreed. So for those of you who don't know, I, um, I just, can we just take a look? Can we just take a look? at this author photo. This is the photo that is inside the jacket for this book. This is Zhao's author photo. And if you didn't know what their author photo was for Iron Widow, you should definitely check that one out. I don't want to spoil it, but it's quite it's quite entertaining, quite humorous. They uh, had made a bet with their friends and, and that was the, the photo that resulted from it. This one is just boss. Like, look at that. Look at that Seto Kaiba cosplay. Yes, that is Seto Kaiba. For those of you who don't know, Zhao is a huge Yu-Gi-Oh fan long before they became a published author. And they actually, their Twitter account, before it went viral for other things, posted a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh memes and, and stuff like that. So they are a longtime lover and fan of Yu-Gi-Oh. So I thought it was quite hilarious that this book, which they openly say is inspired by both Percy Jackson and Yu-Gi-Oh! I, I find it quite hilarious, of course, that they decided to do the Kaiba cosplay for the author photo in this one. I mean, it's just, it's just stunning. You should check them out on YouTube as well. I will le link their channel below in my description. They do lots of great content on Chinese mythology, Chinese hi or well, well, Chinese history. On TikTok, they've started showing off some amazing authentic slash historically accurate Chinese clothing from across the different dynasties. And and really, they're just a joy. Uh, all of their content is great. They also have some great French Revolution memes. I would just, 
I love this author. So anyway, now I will read you the review that I have written. Don't worry, it's short. Very strict word limit, like I mentioned before. So, Zach is a 12 year old boy. <clears throat> oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I'm so, my voice is so rusty. Drinking soda probably doesn't help this. <clears throat> Zach is a 12-year-old boy who struggles to fit into his mostly white class while feeling disconnected from his Chinese heritage. A sudden, disastrous encounter with the ghost of the first emperor of China possessing Zach's AR gaming headset catapults him into a whirlwind quest to save his mom's stolen soul. Alongside two other kids hosting the spirits of long-dead emperors, Zach races to learn how to use his newfound magical powers while being hounded by numerous enemies of his tyrannical ancestor. Zhao's writing style has an easy flow. Younger audiences will have no problem following. They have an incredible sense of humor, weaving cultural and popular media references throughout the witty dialogue while not disrupting the story or sounding forced. They also do a brilliant job introducing the history and tales of many of China's most prominent figures. There is enough information to connect you to the stories without becoming long-winded. The intricacies of Zach's Hui Muslim identity and American upbringing are examined with care and clearly criticizes the Chinese government for its role in oppressing Muslims. This book is a mirror for any young person who struggles to feel like they belong anywhere, and the perfect lens through which a reader can discover a mythos and history long neglected by Western media. I hope you all enjoyed that review. So. Uh, in case some of you don't know, there was a phrase I used at the end. I said this book is a mirror for any young person who struggles to feel like they belong anywhere. There is a very popular article slash uh, story that is shared. It was one of the first readings I ever had to do with this class. It is called Mirrors, Windows, and Doors. And it's a very great metaphor for the philosophy that writers, authors, librarians, and publishers have. Well, I mean... I can't speak for the major publishers. I guess they still value money over everything else. But authors and and librarians, when, when developing our collections, take this metaphor into account. Mirrors, windows, and doors. Especially in regarding children's literature. These are metaphors for the kinds of perspectives and experiences that readers will get when reading any, any sort of, or, or consuming any sort of media. The people, the characters that are in these stories, are they going to be mirrors? Which means, do they reflect the child's own personal experience? Does the child see themselves in these characters, in these books and media? Or is the media a window? Does it, does it let them see through to another perspective that they may not be familiar with, that they may not know about? That could be, you know, just different life experiences, but also different cultures. Or, and this is kind of the, the best thing that we hope for, but it is a step in a process. Will, the book, will this book or media be a sliding door? Something that will help the child form a connection to those characters, to those other perspectives or experiences that will sort of help them grow as a person and facilitate better interactions with other people in the world who are different from themselves. And as librarians and as many teachers of children and parents probably feel, it's very important that a child see all of these different kinds of media. You don't want your child to only see mirrors, to only see windows. And for many people, that has been their experience growing up. They're, maybe they didn't see stories that showed other perspectives or other life experiences. Maybe they only ever saw media that reflected their own experiences. And then for other children, maybe they only ever saw windows and never mirrors. Maybe they never saw themselves in any of the media they consumed or the books they read, and that can be harmful to their formation of their own identity. So I really enjoyed this book because, as I mentioned, Zachary Ying has a Hui Muslim identity, but yet he was raised in America. So this is an incredibly unique perspective, and yet one that will feel very familiar to children who are perhaps immigrants, children of immigrants, children of mixed identities, and that uh, especially diaspora, when you read about Zachary Ying's 
backstory and his and his reasons for having migrated to America with his mother. But overall, even beyond that, outside of the cultural elements, outside of the mirrors, windows, and doors that I just talked about, it's really just an enjoyable book to read. It's middle grade, so like I said in my review, it's very easy to read. There were so many times that I laughed out loud while reading this book because Zhao has such a great wit and is great at writing dialogue that feels very natural and also kind of hilarious. On my Twitter, I had been screenshotting some of my favorite lines from the book. I'll link my tweet below as well so you can click on it. And the author, Shiran Jezhao, actually retweeted it, which made me so happy, you know, like, oh, Senpai noticed me, it was so fun. And, and so many people liked it. And they said I even managed to spot their favorite line in the whole book, which I won't, I won't say it's because, you know, you should go look at the tweet and maybe, and, and you'll see which line is their favorite. Uh, there were even more lines that I wanted to screenshot and post, but many of them were late enough in the book that even without context, they could be a spoiler. So I left them out, but I hope all of you will check it out, especially if you loved their Zhao's debut YA novel, Iron Widow. But even if you don't normally like read middle grade or you think it's too young for you, it's honestly not. It's just easy. To, it's just easier to read than even a lot of like YA or adult novels. And if you liked Percy Jackson or Yu-Gi-Oh now or when you were younger, you should check this out because you will enjoy it. I wonder if there was anything else I wanted to talk about. I feel like I went on for a while about that, but honestly, that was kind of that's been the highlight of recent weeks. I am doing slightly worse in regards to like my ADHD and keeping up with the readings for all the different classes. There's just so many. And you know, sometimes when you see that one of your assigned readings is just 45 pages of a chapter Xeroxed out of a textbook, it's really, it really, you know, you just really don't want to read that one. and. Maybe you for, and, and especially when I, I need to print out my readings. The easiest way I've found to, to get through a lot of these is to print them out so that I can write on them and highlight specific passages as I go. And I have a special homework hat. It's a pro ADHD tip. Uh, if you, or a pro studying tip in general, really, if you have trouble with like getting distracted or switching into like a study mode mentally is to have some sort of accessory that you like a physical item that is associated with being in study mode so i have a hat that is specifically worn during class time to help me with note taking and i wear that hat when i'm supposed to be doing homework or reading so i will put the hat on and that helps me that helps remind me that i shouldn't be doing anything else i'm supposed to be reading sometimes i will even step away from my computer and that helps since I have the readings printed out. Some of the things I have to read are articles that are online, so I have to be at my computer and that's where the book helps, or that's where the hat helps. I also have special shoes that I wear. It's just for being productive in general. So I wear shoes while I'm editing these videos and I wear shoes while I'm, um, <clears throat> while I'm, I'm doing readings and things like that. But yeah, so that's everything I can think of this time. I'll try to do another update in November. I don't know if it will be before or after Thanksgiving, but I am still doing well. I'm going to be registering for next semester's classes tomorrow. So in next month's update, I will talk about maybe what I'll be learning next semester as well. But until next time, I hope you all check out my other content on TikTok and Twitter, and I hope you read something interesting. <laughs>